Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back into the Color Gemstone Academy. I am your host and instructor, Paul DC. And this is my YouTube channel, and it is called Paul DC Gemstones. My goal, as always, is to be the largest free weekly gem seminars on YouTube, and you're helping me get there. As of today's date, and I'm taping this on the 24th of February, 2021, we have surpassed 1100 in fact for 1130 subscribers and i thank each and every one of you i couldn't do it without you but if you have not yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button it's absolutely free it doesn't cost you a penny but it really does help me continue to do these lessons for you well this lesson today is on spessartine sometimes called spessar tight garnet and it is the third in my mini series on garnets now, if you remember back from uh, Garnet 101, what episode was that? I think that was episode 48. I talked to you about how there are the aluminum members of the Garnet family, and there are the calcium members of the Garnet family. Okay, so we'll just do a little review if you didn't watch episode 48, Garnet 101, but you better watch it eventually. But um, I showed you a chart, and I'm going to show it again, where you can see how we separate the Garnet group into the aluminum members, and you can see that on your screen right now. And then we have the calcium members. And we'll talk about those as lessons four, five, and six in my mini series of garnet. Now, what is spessartine garnet and what makes it so special? Well, spessartine garnet can be a spectacular yellow or even orange color of garnet. And it can range from a spectacular orange color to, and it can go really from almost every iteration of red to brown, including yellow. Um, where did the name come from? Why, we, why do we call it spessartine or spessartite garnet? Well, it's called spessartine garnet because it comes from, it, it comes, names comes from the spessart uh, district of Bavaria where this gem was first discovered. Now, spessartine garnet itself is a pretty rare form of the garnet family of gemstones but what i like most about it it can be a substitute for some of the shades of the imperial topaz which is even rarer and more valuable more costly more expensive than the garnet in fact i'm going to show you on your screen right now here is an example of an orange imperial topaz now i'm going to show you a picture of the orange spessartine garnet Actually, in my opinion, I think I like the coloration and the sparkle of the garnet version of that orange stone than I do the imperial topaz, which is much more expensive. Now I'm going to show you a yellow example of the imperial topaz, and then I'm going to show you now a yellow version of the spessartine garnet. So you get the idea. You can really do a, a great, it's a great gemstone, not as well known and not as expensive as that imperial topaz. So feel free to substitute it if you find any. Well, some of you might have noticed that there are boats and sounds of boats going by. That's because I'm taping this in front of the intercoastal water on the west coast, uh, intercoastal waterway on the west coast of Florida. So you'll hear boats like the one just revving his engine right now going by. But today we're talking about the Spessartine Garnet. Now, as always, I love to give you what I call the vital statistics, because remember, every gem has physical, chemical, and optical properties that make it unique, and it's how you identify what is a garnet versus what is a ruby, and so on and so forth. Well, as far as the vital statistics, first and foremost, just like any variety of garnet, garnet is the birthstone for the month of January. Doesn't matter if it's an almondine, a pyrep, or spessartine, or the other varieties that we're going to talk to, to uh, going forward. It is also the anniversary stone for the second wedding anniversary. So if this is your second wedding anniversary and you're celebrating it, any garnet, including the spessartine, would be a very, very appropriate gift to give. It is a zodiac stone for Aquarius, of which I am a member. And that means it is between, if you're born between January 21st and February 21st, you are an Aquarian and garnet would be your zodiac stone. The chemical composition, remember it's gonna have to have that aluminum because it's part of that aluminum group. It is manganese aluminum silicate. So check, check, check to that. 
uh, its crystal structure is cubic. Remember, that, that runs true through all of the garnet group, whether they're the alum uh, aluminum or the calcium members of the garnet group. It's going to have a cubic crystal structure. It's one of the identifying characteristics for that. Now your hardness on the garnet, or the spessartite, or spessartine garnet specifically, it's going to be between the 6.5 to 7.5 on the Mohs scale of hardness. So those of you that are new to the channel, remember the Mohs scale of hardness is literally a measurement of what gem can scratch another gem. It goes between 1 and 10, 1 being talc, 10 being a diamond. A really good all-around gemstone to think about is uh, quartz like an amethyst or citrine is a 7 out of 10. This is 6.5 to 7.5, so it's certainly suitable for everyday way to be resistant from scratching. Now we go to the toughness of the gemstone. That's a different measurement of uh, durability altogether. It's the ability to withstand cracking or chipping of a gemstone. In fact, diamonds aren't very rated very well for that. They can chip actually pretty easily if you hit it in the same place. This one is rated fair to good, so that is a uh, very, very good all-around toughness for a gemstone as well. And then we get into the refractive index. Now, I love the refractive index, especially on the garnets, because that measures the sparkle of a gemstone. You can determine how much a gem will sparkle by its refractive index reading. Diamonds, 2.42. Most of your color gemstones will be just below 2 and then kind of trail off from there. This is a 1.79 to 1.80. That's really pretty much third or fourth in the, in the most sparkle you can get in a gemstone. So you're going to do very, very well with the spessartine on its refractive index reading as well. Then we get to something called specific gravity. And specific gravity is the heft of a gemstone. How heavy is it for its size? And that's kind of a good way to describe it. Well, in this uh, particular case, it's 4.19. Now, that puts it a little bit more dense than a citrine would be, than, than a yellow sapphire would be. Remember, sapphires are 4 on the uh, specific gravity scale. This is a 4.19. So it's going to be a little bit denser, a little bit heavier of a gemstone than another, like a sapphire of the same size. That's uh, one way to put that anyway. The uh, thing I like about all garnets, whether it's the almondine that we spoke about, pyrope last week, this week the spessartine, there are no treatments whatsoever. Most people are surprised to learn that most gems receive a treatment, whether it's heat treating, dyeing, irradiation, something to improve the color or the performance of that gemstone. There are no uh, known treatments on the, any of the garnet family of gemstones. It's a completely natural, untreated gem. I know uh, when I mentioned the, comparing this to the imperial topaz, imperial topaz is much more rare and, and much more expensive, generally speaking, than garnet. But that said, spessartine garnet is one of the rarer forms of the garnet, and um, you can pay a much higher price for spessartine garnet than you could for the almondine garnet, which is much, much more readily available. Uh, now, remember when I say it can be much more expensive, it depends on the quality, on those four C's that we talk about, the color, the cut, the clarity, and the carat weight. But all things being equal, the spessartine is going to be a much more valuable gem to collect than the almondine garnet will be. Now. Where does it come from? Because that's always the big question. I mean, you, you want to you wanna get a gemstone, you want to know where it comes from, what is the providence of the stone, the, uh, where did it originate from? Okay, so finally, where does garnet come from? The spessartine garnet specifically, where is it mined? In what areas of the world could I find this? Well, let me go through some of those sources. Afghanistan. Australia. It can be found in India. It can be found in some quantities in Israel. Another very rich place for a lot of gemstones, including spessartine, is Madagascar. And also Mozambique. Myanmar, which is the area that used to be known as Burma. Namibia, there in Africa. Nigeria, 
Tanzania, which we also know for its, um, for its rubies and its tanzanite. But yeah, they, you can find the spessartine garnet in Tanzania. And finally, in the United States of America. Well, hopefully I've answered all of your curiosities and questions about the spessartine species of the garnet family of gemstones. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, please subscribe if you have not done so already. Uh, my next milestone I'm shooting for is for 1,200 subscribers, and you can help me get there if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, I will be back next week with part four of the mini series of Garnet, and that one will be very, very interesting. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.